Five questions unmarried couples should ask before buying a house. If you're foregoing marriage but are considering purchasing a home with your partner, there are a few key factors that you should consider first. Stay tuned as we talk more about this topic. Hi, Thomas Fang with Bay Area Connect. In the past two decades, the number of unmarried couples living together has nearly tripled from 6 million to 17 million, according to the United States Census Bureau. Whether they're renting apartments or buying homes, many couples decide to live together without tying the knot. By preparing well, you can increase your chances of cohabitating bliss in your new dream home. Here are a few questions unmarried couples should consider before buying a house. Number one, who is applying for the mortgage? Before you begin searching for a home, you should compare mortgage options and determine who is actually applying for the mortgage. Unmarried couples will apply for a mortgage as individuals. This means the partner with the stronger financials and credit score may want to purchase the home to get better mortgage terms and interest rates. Before applying for the mortgage, it's a good idea to review each other's credit scores, debt to income ratios, incomes, employment statuses, and additional assets. Some lenders may allow both parties to apply for a mortgage together. This might help you and your partner qualify for a larger mortgage since you're combining two incomes. However, if one partner has a weak credit score, the lender may base their lending decision on that lower credit score. And in this case, it might be best for one party to apply for a mortgage themselves. Number two, what is the best way to hold title? Your title provides proof of ownership and a physical description of the property. There are several ways to hold the title of your new home. The way that the title is worded can really impact the way ownership is transferred as well as your rights to transfer ownership. Here are some of the common options. Sole ownership, joint tenancy, tenants in common, and also in a trust. How you title your property will impact the outcome of its sale. It can also impact the taxes and fees associated with selling your home. To determine the best way to hold the title for your unique situation, it's always a good idea to contact a real estate attorney or tax advisor. Number three, should you get a cohabitation property agreement? When couples live together, married or not, they most likely will accumulate equity. But unlike married couples, unmarried couples may not have the same property protections. Because of this, it's wise for a couple to create a cohabitation property agreement with an attorney. This agreement will outline who owns what and what will happen in the event that the couple chooses to separate. Without a cohabitation property agreement, you could experience time-consuming and expensive legal battles. Many agreements will include the following. Type of ownership on the title and deed. How income and expenses are shared. How newly acquired assets will be divided. A buyout agreement. Action plan for a job transfer. Dispute process and exit strategy. Since purchasing a home with your partner is a huge financial undertaking, it's important to protect your rights and assets. Creating a cohabitation agreement with an attorney can help you avoid future emotional and financial distress. Number four, how will you split costs? In your cohabitation property agreement, you'll also want to lay out how you and your partner will pay for home expenses. How you decide to split those expenses will depend on what you both are comfortable with and what is suitable for your individual financial needs. You may decide you want to open a joint bank account and contribute an equal amount automatically every month. Another option might be to divide up the expenses and have one partner pay for utilities and maintenance costs, while the other partner may pay for lawn care services and cable. Now, if one partner makes significantly more than the other, you may decide that they will pay a greater share of those property costs. There is no right or wrong way to divide up the property costs. You'll have to have these conversations with your partner and really determine what is fair and what you can reasonably afford. Number five, what happens if one person decides that they wanna move out? Whether it's a breakup, 
or one person gets a job in another state, having a plan in place is essential. The house can always be sold or one partner can buy out the other. Now, this is assuming that both partners are on the title to the home. It is possible that if you decide to break up, the bank may force the sale of the property. If the party keeping the property isn't able to buy out the partner who's moving on, then the best option could be to sell. Now, depending on your agreement, any party who owns a portion of the property can force a sale. If you own 70% of the home and your partner wants to move out or break up, you may have to pay them 30% of ownership. Or if you're both on the mortgage, then you may have to consider refinancing. We will talk in depth about methods to hold title in our upcoming videos. Please reach out anytime as my team and I are here to help. If you have any questions, please give me a call. 408-840-3852. I'm Thomas Fang with Bay Area Connect, and I'm here to provide you with a smarter approach to real estate. If you feel we missed anything, please leave a comment below and we can discuss it in a future video. And if you found this video to be beneficial, please like, comment below, and subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next video.